One, two, three. One, two, three. Three up. We gotta do it today. We gotta do it today. Let's go. Let's go, bro. All in, all out, bro. This rivalry, perhaps the best across the entire NFL, is renewed here this afternoon on America's Game of the Week. The Seahawks with the NFL's best record as we play here in Week 14, taking on the 49ers. Things are getting brighter for San Francisco on a beautiful day in the Bay Area. We're glad you're with us today on Fox. 49ers getting healthy. Seahawks start the day with a football as Dawson kicks it away. Seattle will start at the 20. Russell Wilson has been described, Troy, as the best player on the best team in the NFL. And the way he's played of late, he's launched himself into the MVP conversation. Well, it sure has. You see right there on the graphic, he's third in the NFL in quarterback rating. He's had an outstanding year, Joe. He finished up last season playing great football. He's been good throughout this year. He has been hot. Just took apart New Orleans last Monday night. Starts with a throw and a completion. Passes caught Golden Tate. And Tate is spun out of bounds after a gain of 16 yards by Carlos Rogers. And we look at this offense, which has the third best rushing attack. And here's the group up front, and they're finally healthy. Yeah, they're finally healthy, and their left guard, James Carpenter, he has been rotating through with Paul McQuist in the last two weeks. He gets the start here this afternoon. That is performance-based. Handoff is to Lynch, and a big back picks up two. Already a couple of shoves after the action. After Lynch carry the ball on first down and we look at this very good 3-4 defense and Justin Smith at end is starting to enforce his will again. <laughs> Probably his best game of the year last or last week and that win over St. Louis here in his 13th season. He does not look to be slowing down at all. Handoff to Lynch, and Marshawn Lynch out to the 44-yard line, two yards shy of a first down. Patrick Willis on the tackle. Well, you look at these two teams, Joe, and they're really built a lot alike. They both want to run the football. In fact, both of these offenses run the ball more than they throw it, which is something no other team in the NFL can say. Defensively, they're both very strong. You talked about the rivalry that we have here. This will be a physical, old-fashioned football game here today. Third down and two. Wilson in trouble. And loss of football out of bounds. It's fourth down, knocked out by Bowman. Navarro Bowman, one of those four terrific linebackers, knocked it out. Well, Navarro Bowman, he's in the middle. He's basically spying on Russell Wilson, and as soon as Wilson gets outside the pocket, he's able to come in and make a play. The way Wilson reacted to Bowman coming up on him, it was as if he didn't think he was going to be able to make a play on him. But an outstanding stop defensively by the 49ers. That stat is hard to believe. 15 punt return yards allowed all year by the Seahawks. None here. Fair catch for the Michael James. Take a break. 49ers have it for the first time. Bowman made the play. No score. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. San Francisco 49ers have not lost here to the Seahawks since 2008. They're getting healthy on offense. As Kaepernick starts with it, he hands off. It's Frank Gore. And Gore has been bottled up over the last three games. No gain. Bobby Wagner, the middle linebacker, made the stop. 
And Colin Kaepernick, you could just sense, Troy, that sitting down talking with Kaepernick, even Jim Harbaugh, and certainly Greg Roman, the mood has lightened around here as this group has gotten healthy. Well, he's coming off two excellent performances the last two weeks. He did go through a bit of a midseason slump, but he's playing good football right now. Second down and ten, Kaepernick shows off the fastball and too hot for Crabtree. And now third down and ten. And this is about as physical a secondary as you'll find in the NFL. Yeah, Byron Maxwell, you see, he got his first start last week, and he gets another start here today with Brandon Browner being down. But they don't change what they do defensively. They're going to get physical. In fact, in talking with offensive coordinator Greg Roman for the 49ers, he said, really, their philosophy is that they're going to continue to be physical. How many times are the officials going to make the call or throw a penalty when there's contact beyond five yards? On third down and ten, Kaepernick throws, and there's a lot of contact, no flag. Pass incomplete for Manningham, and it's fourth down. Covered by Jeremy Lane, who is an example of the great depth on this roster. Yeah, you see the hand checking going on down the field and definitely contact as Mario Manningham tries to come back and that plays into what I said they're going to continue to play that style and just challenge these officials to make calls and it's something that the 49ers believe isn't called often enough on fourth down and ten after a three and out Lee hits it beauty Golden Tate from just inside the 15 crosses the 25 got hit hard by Dan Scooter. 12 yards on the return. Seattle the ball. Second time, no score in San Francisco. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. A group of about 100 contributors pulled together over $1,800 to fly that banner that reads Go Hawks 12. As the Seahawks have it for the second time in this game. Lynch out wide at the bottom of the screen. Wilson in trouble. He finds Tate. And Golden Tate knocked down at the 31. Joel Klatt is standing by with a game break. Guys, back to Baltimore. Four scores inside of two minutes. This is the final one. Joe Flacco to Marlon Brown. Nine yards. It was reviewed, confirmed, and Baltimore will retain that sixth spot in the AFC playoff race. 29-26 over Minnesota. Joe, Troy, and Pam. Yeah, that was a big one for the Ravens as they came back and won it at the end after the Patterson touchdown by the Vikings. Now second and six. Hand off to Lynch, bouncing it, first down. And a penalty flag flies. At the end of the play, Dante Whitner made the stop. But the flag came in, and it looks like a hold against Seattle. Holding. Offense in the 76. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. They get Russell Okun, who started the first two games, then missed the next eight. With a bad toe. What are you doing over there with a telestrator? Someone's been playing with the telestrator again. Ben. They got Russell Okun, the left tackle. He's holding. Justin Smith got the helmet on sideways. <laughs> <laughs> so Okun is back. He got injured against the 49ers in Seattle week two. And they missed him. Second and 12. Just got it away. That's Lynch out in the backfield. And a nice play is made by one of those good linebackers. A gain of five. Actually, it was the rookie Reed. And there's another flag down on the far side of the field. We'll get the call from Blakeman. Offside. Defense number 55. Play was in the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's against Ahmad Brooks. Yeah, they got Ahmad Brooks for being in the neutral zone at the time of the snap. And you know, what a year he has had. I mean, he was a guy who 
last year of those four linebackers did not make the Pro Bowl and Joe I think he's had a Pro Bowl season certainly this year and he could be making a trip over there to Hawaii on second down and seven Turbin now in the backfield they fake it to him he had curse underneath and the pass broken up play made in front of Luke Wilson and the coverage with Eric Wright who flashed in front nearly came away with a pick it's third and seven boy Eric Wright got a heck of a jump on that throw and that he had been able to make a play there was nobody out in front of him flag and Wilson goes down they threw the flag prior to the snap looked like delay a game and we'll see if they get another crack at third down prior to the snap delay a game offense it's a five yard penalty still third down so that makes it third down and 12. Well, right now, this game in the early going, Joe, is about what we had expected. Two great defensive teams, hard to move the football against them. A lot of penalties, you know, here on this possession for Seattle. But quite a push inside by San Francisco on that last play. On third down and 12, Wilson. Hangs in, throws, pass downfield, and off the hand of Baldwin, it's fourth down. The pass a little behind him with Carlos Rogers in coverage, and the Seahawks are 0 for 2 on third down so far. Well, we've seen this now a couple times. You're going to see Ahmad Brooks here in the middle. He's going to drop off, and he's trying then just to shadow Russell Wilson, and if he tries to get outside the pocket, as we saw in the first possession by the Seahawks, then he's going to be there to make a play on him, and Trying to keep Russell Wilson in the pocket as much as possible. Another end over end punt by Ryan. And a fair catch again called for and hauled in by LaMichael James. Second possession for the 49ers. No score in San Francisco. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. By Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by American Hustle in theaters December. Beautiful day in San Francisco. First possession, Frank Gore got that hit from Bobby Wagner, helmet to helmet. Checked out of the game. They're saying he's okay from the sideline, but he is standing there as the 49ers have it for the second time. Good news for San Francisco and the left tackle Joe Staley, two time Pro Bowl. Blindside protector for the 49ers is able to start in this game. Kaepernick just got rid of it and finds his fullback Miller. the pressure put on by Seattle a seven yard completion this was close yeah you see Cliff Averill he comes off the edge he's able to get underneath right tackle Anthony Davis Kaepernick able to get it off just in time as you said Joe and a nice completion there last week the same thing happened a couple times to Anthony Davis at the right tackle position Cliff Averill quite an addition this year for that Seahawks defense it's second down and three a toss to Kendall Hunter running right First down. A gain of seven. And Frank Gore checks back into the game. Well, good run there by Kendall Hunter. I know Frank Gore has been frustrated the last three weeks. He has not run the ball as effectively as he's accustomed to. Not as, a, not as good as what these 49ers are accustomed to running the ball either. As I said coming in, this is a, a tough defense. To have much success against. On first down, Kaepernick has a man. Passes caught in the 
It's Antoine Bolden. Good for nine, and we go to Kurt Menefee with a game break. In a 30-second span, the Patriots scored a touchdown, got an onside kick recovery, a questionable pass interference call that set up the Tom Brady to Danny Amendola game winner against Cleveland, 27-26. Patriots were down 19-3, third straight comeback win. They just do it week after week. It's incredible to get what they need, even an onside kick. It's amazing. There's some great finishes in those early games today. Yeah, week 14 has been tremendous already. Here's Gore. And Gore will take it to the 31, a gain of six. Bobby Wagner on the tackle, and finally we get a chance to show you this offense. And there's Joe Staley at left tackle, despite the grade one MCL sprain in his right knee last week early against St. Louis. No one anticipated him playing today. He didn't get hardly any practice time. Looked like Alex Boone was going to be making the start at left tackle, but the only one missing now is left guard Mike Upati, who's missing his third game in a row. On first down, Kaepernick. That pass was tipped. We go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, to follow up on something Troy talked about, in their first meeting, the Niners say Seattle routinely and illegally that they continue to grab and tackle and also to pull jerseys. Offensive coordinator Greg Roman, he called them muggings. Well, I spoke to the referee today, Cleet Blackman, about that. If they're going to call anything unusual, he said, no, we're going to keep an eye on things and call things as we normally would. Back to you. And thanks, second down and 10 after that first down pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Kaepernick, far sideline, and the pass is caught. Crabtree, his second game back. A lot of contact with Maxwell. Now Crabtree gets up limping, going back to the sideline. This is an outstanding job by Michael Crabtree, knowing that it's going to be physical here against Byron Maxwell, and yet he's able to make a play on this ball. It's an outstanding job at the point of the catch and being able to haul it in. Another good job as well by Colin Kaepernick using hard count. These pass rushers for the Seahawks can really get off at the snap and using hard count to his advantage. Inside the red zone are the 49ers. Kaepernick keeps it. Out to his left, throws it away. San Francisco is the sixth best team across the NFL inside the red zone scoring touchdowns at a clip of 62 percent. Look at this Seattle defense which is the first ranked defense in their number two in points allowed. Well they do a good job coming off the edge and getting pressure on the quarterback even inside. And they are a little bit of a different team when they're playing on the road as opposed to playing there in Seattle. But as I said Colin Kaepernick able to use the snap count here in San Francisco, something you can't do or they weren't able to do in their first meeting. Crabtree back out there. That's a good sign for San Francisco. Here's a snap to Kaepernick. Kaepernick is tripped up. And a touchdown saving tackle made by Bobby Wagner. Just got him around the ankles of the feet, a gain of nine. Yeah, Bobby Wagner, he's been pretty active here in this first quarter. He's made some plays already in the running game. And now he saves a touchdown for Colin Kaepernick. It's not easy to do to get him to the ground one on one, but he did it. Brings up third down and one. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Quick snap. It's Miller. And Miller did not get there. It's fourth down for San Francisco, and the field goal unit will come on as Jim Harbaugh wants to put up the first points of the day. Pressure right here in the middle is where it comes from. Red Bryan is the one who's able to collapse. Anthony Davis keep the 49ers from picking up that first down. 23-yard try by Dawson, who's had a good year, 19 of 22. A pro bowler last year, his first year this season in San Francisco. Little chip shot. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And the first points of the day belong to the 49ers, a game they need in that wild card chase. A three zip at home. Cap 
Kaepernick came close. Touchdown saving tackle by Bobby Wagner. And then a hold defensively on third down and a yard. So a three point trip down the field for San Francisco as the 49ers check into this game at eight and four. A game they need to stay out in front of Philadelphia in that wild card chase. Philadelphia won at home in that blizzard over Detroit, which for the moment puts Philadelphia out in front of Dallas. Dallas plays at Chicago tomorrow night. This is Turbin from the end zone. And Robert Turbin cannot make the 20. Third possession for the Seahawks, and we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. What do you think we're going to see uh, the rest of the way here? I, this rivalry, I know, is one that gets you excited. It's great. I mean, I do think it's the best rivalry in football right now. These two teams do not like each other in the same division. Clearly, a lot has been on the line when they have faced each other, and they're built so much alike. Amazingly physical, the way both of these teams play. If you like old-fashioned, Hit him in the mouth football, you're gonna love it. On first down, Wilson has got his tight end, and Zach Miller has got a first down out to the 31 yard line, a gain of 13. What makes Russell Wilson so good? Well, he's got amazing composure, first of all, for such a young player. He's clearly a very dynamic athlete in his ability to move. He throws the ball well, whether it's from the pocket or moving outside the pocket. But I just think more than anything, Joe, it's his maturity level and the way that he's able to elevate the play of the players around him. Handoff somehow got it to Marshawn Lynch. Out to the 35-yard line. You, know, you think about last year and you know the early going they were protecting him a little bit and then probably about the time that Pete Carroll saw what was happening in Washington with RG3 that they decided to implement some of that within the offense Daryl Bevel the offensive coordinator and it was at that moment that things really started to happen offensively for the Seahawks and Russell Wilson and it carried into the postseason last year he was outstanding on the biggest on the biggest stage. Second down and six Lynch over the right side Justin Smith closed down and along with the borrow Bowman made that play a gain of one third down coming up. Talked about how hard it was to run the football against Seattle to get big plays down the field. It's even tougher against this San Francisco defense. Their front seven is the strength. Linebackers are outstanding. Justin Smith the guys in the middle. They're low. Third down and five. Wilson protected pass caught first down but a flag and this could be against Golden Tate. Golden Tate gave a shove and this is against Seattle. And will wipe away a 15 yard completion. Now Eric right you look at the top of this route and the hands and arms get extended. Pass interference offense number 81 10 yard penalty still third down. As soon as that happens those officials see that the extension of the arm and when that then creates separation. They're going to throw the flag and it really wasn't required because Golden Tate had Eric Wright running. He just plant your foot in the ground and come back and you're going to create that separation without having to push off. Remember Seattle is playing with no Percy Harvin who's inactive again today. He's coming off the hip surgery. He's played only one game and they lost Sidney Rice week eight in St. Louis. Third down and 15 now. Just got it away. Russell Wilson set. Brought down by Ray McDonald. Looks like Russell Wilson might have been trying to call timeout before that ball was snapped. He didn't get the call. They run a twist around the outside with McDonald. Justin Smith ties two guys up in the middle. Ray McDonald comes off of that. 
makes a big sack on third down. Ray McDonald had a sack last week after missing two straight with a high ankle sprain. Punt is blocked. It's knocked forward and now controlled by San Francisco inside the 35. It was Kasim Osgood who is a tremendous special teams player got his hand on it. Kasim Osgood, he shows up each week in special teams, one of the better players in the league, and he's able to split this one and get a direct line on the punt. They threw a flag for that bat forward by Seattle, but it's Osgood who makes the play on the block, and that's the second block of a John Ryan punt this season. You saw the replay of the bat forward. We'll get the call from Cleet Blakeman, who now runs all the way across the field, and we'll discuss with Jim Harbaugh the call and ask him what he wants to do. And obviously Harbaugh Not happy with what he's hearing at this point. Yeah, illegal bat, the kicking team. That penalty is declined. San Francisco elects to take the result of the play, which is their ball, first down. You could see Blankman saying, you can decline it and take the ball right there, which is what Jim Harbaugh elected to do. And that was blocked. I mean, by the midsection of Kasim Osgood, who just shot right through. Now, you watch this punt return team for San Francisco, and Kasim Osgood, he just shows up. He's very active, and this time they go after the punt, and he had just a straight shot. It's an outstanding job, because in a game like this, that's as physical as it is, and as hard to score points as it is against both these teams. Oftentimes, it's special teams that tilts the game in one of these teams' favor. Starting at the Seattle 34. Hand off to Gore. Somehow finds his way through that crowd and picks up four. Brought down by K.J. Wright. Frank Gore has had a lot of work. And when... A running back turns 30 and the production drops off. They start to say, well, maybe he's getting old as he's averaged, what, three yards a carry over the last three games. Yeah, but I, you know, watching him this year, Joe, I know the last three weeks haven't been a lot of fun for him, but I, I don't think he's slowing down. He's still, still one of my favorite players to watch in the league. Kaepernick keeps it out to his right. Pass is caught by Crabtree. They're ruling a catch initially. The officials get together, and now one overrules the other. It's incomplete, and we take a look. He secures it. Left foot down. Right foot does not come down pass. inbounds. That's a good call. It sure Third is. Down. They come in. They discuss it. They overturn the call, and it's an outstanding job by those officials. And Michael Crabtree, I know, in talking with Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh on Friday as far as where he's at. He returned last week. He had two receptions. He had a 60-yard catch up the sideline. As far as is, is he at full strength, they believe maybe not quite, but he's awfully close. On third down and six. They blow it dead. The play clock was at one. San Francisco may have called a timeout on the sideline. San Francisco takes its first timeout. That came from the sideline. Timeout San Francisco for third down and six. We hope you get a chance to show you why Jim Harbaugh was upset. They didn't reset the play clock. We had to spend a timeout. For a third down and six. Pass is dropped. The receiver was open. That's Manningham. But he could not hang on. Let's go back to why Jim Harbaugh was pleading with the officials. Well, you look at the play clock here after the play. The officials are trying to decide was it complete or was it not. But they start the play clock 
And as the play caller, you don't know then is it going to be first and ten or is it going to be third and six? So I think Jim Harbaugh was right in being upset for them not resetting the play call. Now a 48-yard try by Phil Dawson. And Dawson continues his good year. Good from 48. And it's 6-0, 49ers on top. And the effervescence and always up, Pete Carroll pumping up his team on the sideline as the defense takes a stand. Fox UFC Saturday returns this week as Demetrius Johnson defends his World Flyweight Championship against Joseph Benavides, live on Fox. Joseph is here. Uriah Faber is here. The top contenders in the two main events for next weekend's Fox UFC Saturday in Sacramento. There they are on what is here in December a pleasant day at Candlestick Park. Well, you show Pete Carroll and you know him over on the sideline. He's got to be happy with what just happened. 49ers take over on the 34-yard line, and yet they had to settle for a field goal. So their defense being able to hold up when they have to to just give up two field goals and be down six points, he's got to be happy about that. And it's pretty much what you expected. These are the two, two of the premier defenses across the NFL. And they're showing it here in the first quarter. Points are hard to come by. And so, as I said, special teams is a big factor in this game. The other part of it, you know, Jimmy Johnson used to always say, hey, it's not who makes the most big plays, it's who makes the fewest bad plays. And that's certainly appropriate in a game like this with two teams so evenly matched. Robert Turpin waits for the kick from Dawson. Let's hear from Russell Wilson, who is back to work, down by six. The season that we've had so far and, and all the talk, you know, with MVP and Super Bowls and all this other stuff, I don't pay attention to it. You know, ignoring the noise, you know, pushing it aside and staying focused and being consistent on a daily basis. And that's what a true pro tries to do. Helping him with his focus is Dr. Michael Gervais, who Pete Carroll brought in, a sports psychologist. Interesting with what Russell Wilson does pre and during the football game as Marshawn Lynch carries it out to the 24. Before the game, Russell Wilson is by himself. He walks around a stadium wherever they are, at home, on the road, and he tries to find a spot that he can go to and focus on during the course of the game that he says brings him back to zero, brings him back to his center, and really gives him that laser focus. Well, it looks to me like that spots the 50-yard line today. <laughs> Second and five. Lynch, nice play up front defensively by the 49ers. McDonald was in on that. Glenn Dorsey was in on the stop. Dorsey coming off his best game in the middle up front for the 49ers. 6-0 game. 49ers on top after one. A good one. On America's Game of the Week, back after this from your local Fox station. Let's start quarter number two. And let's start with a third down and four. Neither side has converted on third down yet today. Wilson has a man. Pass is caught, and that's the tight end, Luke Wilson. And Luke Wilson good for 31 yards and that was close to the rookies longest catch of the year. Well the 49ers they go with a four man rush and they're able to keep them off Russell Wilson long enough to allow these guys to get down the field. Luke Wilson on a crossing route with Patrick Willis in coverage and he delivers a perfect strike. Fifth round pick out of Rice. His season long 35 that was 31. And a third down conversion to the 45-yard line. A handoff is to Lynch. 
And Marshawn Lynch to the 41, a gain of four. Now you talked about Russell Wilson, Joe, as far as being a league MVP candidate. And what's even more interesting about that is the fact that he's basically been without his top two wide receivers. Percy Harvin has played all but he's missed all but one game this year. And then Sidney Rice went on IR after eight games. And so he's had to talk about elevating the play of the players around him. He's been able to do that. Doug Baldwin, Golden Tate, Zach Miller, even Jermaine Curse. Those guys have done a good job filling in for the two injured wide receivers. Harold Bevel with a balanced play calling sheet so far as Wilson out to his right. Incomplete. Pass intended for Zach Miller, and it's third and six. Now you mentioned Daryl Bevel, and he's an old quarterback himself. He played at Wisconsin under Barry Alvarez. In fact, Brad Childress, former offensive coordinator for the Eagles and head coach of the Vikings, was his offensive coordinator, and he knows all about the running game, believes in it strongly, and that's one of the reasons why Pete Carroll hired him a couple years ago. Nice to have a good back like Marshawn Lynch. Third and six. Low snap again. Wilson out to his right. Flag is thrown. Pass caught by Golden Tate. First down and more. Tate down inside the 20, but a flag is down in the secondary. It's a defensive hold, so that play will stand. A 24 yarder to Golden Tate. Holding defense, number 53. Penalties declined. First down, Seattle. Navarro Bowman guilty of a hold. Yeah, we'll take a look and see Navar Navarro Bowman. There, there's the hold. And then this is when Golden Tate is really most dangerous. Pretty slippery. He's able to get open to get the ball in his hands, but he's so good after the catch that that's one of the things the 49ers are focused on, trying to minimize as much damage as they can once the ball is in his hands. Inside the red zone is Pete Carroll's offense. Lynch picks his way near the 11. Gain of six. You look at the numbers as far as most wins over the first two seasons in the NFL since 1970. Dan Marino with 21 and tying Ben Roethlisberger is Russell Wilson. He's got four cracks to set the all time record, at least the record since 70. Is getting better and better and better. Second and four. Lynch cuts back. Marshawn Lynch for the touchdown. 11 yards. And with the extra point coming, potentially the first Seahawk lead of the day. Well, because the 49ers are concerned about Russell Wilson getting outside, Ahmad Brooks comes up the field to try to contain Russell Wilson. That's what creates that cutback lane then for Marshawn Lynch to get it into the end zone. And here's a block by Golden Tate. He's a very physical wide receiver for a guy that's no bigger than he is. That is the 10th rushing touchdown of the season for Lynch. It's 11 yards, and it's 7-6 Seattle. You can believe in the run game all you want if you're Daryl Bevel. When you've got number 24 on your side, he's big, he's tough, he's good. He scored. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. By the new Windows, one experience for everything in your life. And by Walmart. Shop early for the season's hottest gifts backed by our new Christmas ad match. That is the 56th career rushing touchdown for Marshawn Lynch. It was picked up in a trade from Buffalo back in 2010. And this Seattle team's got it all. Defense, a running game, a quarterback. Well coached. They seem to have fun. Well, they do that, and it's fun when you win. They've been winning a lot. They also have a lot of depth, Joe. And that's on display, especially in their secondary as Michael James carries out of the end zone and James to the far sideline. They're going to mark him out at the 26. 
We have talked and we will talk about how much these two teams don't like each other. There's Ocon and Alden Smith getting. Say what you want. It's exactly what this is as Gore carries out to the 34 yard line, a gain of eight. Richard Sherman on the tackle. No, Joe, one, I think one of the real keys for San Francisco in this game is going to be the ability to make some plays in the passing game on the outside. We've, we've shown, it's shown every week that when the Seattle Seahawks play defense, they're locked up man to man. It becomes hard to run the football against that. They don't give up big plays. They give up the fewest big pass plays in the NFL, but the 49ers need to get some. Here's Gore. He is knocked down very close to a first down. Depends on where they spot the football. And you look at the defense. The depth is there up front. They have speed at linebacker. And they're secondary, not only physical, but they're big. Well, they, they, they are big, and they're, they are physical with the receivers getting off the line of scrimmage. And the people up front, they're able to get pressure on a quarterback. So that combination is very challenging. But there's not many teams in football that can get away playing the coverages that Seattle does without giving up big plays. It's pretty remarkable when you look at them and how good they are. We sit down with offensive coordinator after offensive coordinator, as you can see, two inches short of a first down are the 49ers and it was Greg Rollman who said they basically play a 6 2 defense up front every play and yet they in essence get away with it and a big reason why is their free safety Earl Thomas who plays center field he makes that whole thing go well, he really does and I know on the pregame this morning Strahan and Howie Long were talking about him as their defensive MV MVP candidate and I would agree with that. Hand off to the up back. That's Miller, and that's the first down. I mean, you can't do what Seattle does defensively if you don't have Earl Thomas, who's starting to develop now, like Ed Reed in his prime, and Greg Roman mentioned the name Troy Palomalu. Just great instincts and the ability to figure out where the ball's going by playing in that deep center field spot. He's got great anticipation. He's got great range. In addition to that, he's very physical. You know, he's kind of the guy that makes it happen. But in addition to that, you got to have good corners, and they have that as well. Look how far back he is on first down. Kaepernick, sideline, pass incomplete for Mario Manningham. And let's go to Joel Klatt with a game break. Hey, Joe, how about Denver? Off to a sluggish start today against Tennessee. Sean Green, a 28-yard touchdown run, his second of the day. And the Broncos down by 11 in the second quarter to the Titans. Back to you, Joe, Troy, and Pam. Yeah, and so all the talk about it being a cold day in Denver, and believe me, it is cold in Denver. And Peyton Manning struggles with the temperatures as low as they are. They're right now the top seed in the AFC, but... New England's right on their tail. And they have the head-to-head -head advantage as well. Timeout taken by San Francisco. They're second. Before second and ten. Down one. You always want to be above approach, especially when you're good, because you don't want people to come back and say, oh, they're winning because they're cheating. I told you good job and uh, good game, and you didn't give me nothing back, you know. I guess, you know, sportsmanship doesn't go both ways. Even the two head coaches are involved in this rivalry now in the NFL that goes back to their time in college. Pete Carroll at USC and Jim Harbaugh at Stanford. Second down and ten. And off to Gore, and he is wrapped up immediately by Red Bryant. No game. Third down and ten coming up. Well, one thing about it, when you're playing Seattle for Greg Roman, you know, I don't want to say calling plays is easy, but it, it becomes easier because you at least know what you're going to get. Like I said, Seattle, they don't confuse you. They don't disguise a lot. They line up, they play their defense, and they believe that they're going to be better at doing it than you are attacking them. Three. 
San Francisco one for four on third down. Kaepernick hangs on to it. Out to his right. Passes off the hands of Crabtree. A flag is down and it just came down. And they are going to call a hold against Seattle, which carries with it an automatic first down. Right, the pass. Holding. Defense, number 25. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that's Richard Sherman, who Jim Harbaugh coached in college at Stanford. Yeah, take a look at this. This is a good matchup here with Richard Sherman and Michael Crabtree. There was the grab. Once Crabtree started to go up the field, Sherman got a hold of him. Here's a hit on Kaepernick at the end of that play. But Richard Sherman, you know, when you mention Earl Thomas and what he means to this defense, Richard Sherman is another one of those guys. Still a young player at that position. He went to Stanford. He was a wide receiver. Only played two years at corner. But he is one of the elite defensive backs in all of football. So a first down after the hold. Kaepernick has pulled it inside the 40. And after the fourth penalty of this game against the Seahawks, a 20-yard completion to Anquan Bolden. Well, you see Byron Maxwell. This time he does not jam Anquan Bolden. They have been for much of the game, but he decides a bail technique. They mix it up. And Anquan Bolden, with a free release off the line of scrimmage, is able to find a hole in that zone, and Kaepernick found him. A very good weak side linebacker for the Seahawks. K.J. Wright just limped off. They need K.J. Wright with the presence of Vernon Davis at tight end for San Francisco. First down, low snap. Kaepernick keeps it. We haven't seen a ton of that. And Kaepernick is down inside the 35, knocked down by Chris Clemens. Gain of three. You know, one thing that San Francisco does a good job of when they run that play and they run Kaepernick is they try to protect them as much as they can. So they're able to get the fullback Bruce Miller out in front and try to take those immediate hits and then trust that Kaepernick's going to go to the ground whenever he's in danger. Doesn't seem to be the same running threat that he was last year, especially in the postseason. When he would just carve up defenses, especially Green Bay's. Second and seven. Pressure. Kaepernick steps up. Looking for Crabtree. Incomplete. 49ers looking for a flag. Harbaugh stomping up and down the sideline. It's third and seven. Maxwell on the coverage. Well, it looked like Crabtree had a step on Maxwell. And, you know, had Kaepernick have been able to lay that ball further up the field, Crabtree may be able to go after and get it. But that should be pass interference. Byron Maxwell never turns and tries to make a play on the ball because it was underthrown. Crabtree trying to come back. I think he has a legitimate argument. Yeah, Harbaugh immediately went to the official. That looked like a missed call. And now third and seven. Intended target. It's fourth and seven, and we'll get a 52 yard try for the lead from Phil Dawson. Well, that's frustrating right there for Jim Harbaugh. As I said, knowing how physical these corners can get, that you just want the officials to make the calls when the calls are there. And certainly, pass interference, if it's called, gives the 49ers a first down. Instead, the try by Dawson. Who is two for two. And now three for three. And a 9-7 lead for the 49ers. Dawson. His good year continues. The lead for the 49ers. Harbaugh wanted more. Wanted a call. Didn't get it. Up by two. Today's game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide Insurance. 49ers on the strength of three field goals by Phil Dawson, up by two. Coming in at eight and four, the Seahawks, the league's best record at 11 and one. Certainly looks like the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC is going to travel through the Pacific Northwest, and that's not good news for anybody else. 
the conference because that is the toughest place to play on the road. Turpin waits for the kick from Dawson. A little bit of a pop up kick, and so a return for Turpin. Shakes one, and a nice return by the backup running back, kick returner Robert Turpin of 27 yards. How about? The Philadelphia Eagles. How about that game today? How'd you like the pictures there with Kevin Burkhart and John Lynch doing that guy? That game was unbelievable. That was crazy, and nobody was going to be able to really throw the ball that effectively in the game. And to see LaShawn McCoy have the day that he had, he's a terrific player. And that was a huge win for the Philadelphia Eagles. As you said, they're now a half a game up on the Cowboys. The Cowboys play tomorrow night, but that keeps that NFC East. Uh, as a pretty good race. Yeah, and so you look at Philadelphia, you look at Dallas. Wait, the Dallas Cowboys, this is a game to me for them coming up tomorrow night where it's time to prove you can win. It's time to prove you can win in December if you're Romo in that group. Yeah, well, I think that's true for all these teams, really. You know, I mean, when you get into this time of the year and the teams that play well in December are going to be the teams that, that go on and play in January. So these divisional races, a game like this even here today with the 49ers and Seahawks, not a lot at stake in terms of Seattle because of the lead they have within the division. But this is a this is a big game for the 49ers and not just because of where they stand in the standings. Seahawks can wrap up the division and a first round by here today as Lynch carries it. Picks up five. We go for an injury update on K.J. Wright. Here's Pam. That's right, Joe. K.J. Wright was completely out of control, though, on the sideline. He got some medical news that he didn't like. I saw him violently bump into someone down here, a non-player, and then he threw his helmet, hitting somebody else in the face. Rice, I mean, Wright, rather, has gone into the locker room. He's questionable with a foot injury, but completely out of control before he left. All right, Pam, thanks. The helmet to the face doesn't sound good. Second down and five. Seahawks down by two. Wilson keeps it, finds Baldwin out on the edge, and Doug Baldwin is out across the 45. A gain of 14 and a first down for Seattle. Uh, K.J. Wright injury too. That's uh, that's significant. He's he's really played well for this defense. Certainly will miss him if he's not able to come back and play. Now Jerron Johnson is going in, special teams player. Backup safety. Turbin gets it. Cuts up field, and Robert Turbin is knocked down just shy of the 45 yard line, a gain of eight. This offensive line lost Russell Okun for eight games. They lost their right tackle, Breno Giacomini, for seven games with a bad knee. Unger has missed three games. So they've had a lot of shuffling up there, but they've allowed only three sacks over their last four games. So they're starting to figure it out. Well, and, and another reason why what Russell Wilson's been able to do this year is even uh, as impressive as it is. Here's Lynch. What a hit at the end of that play by Bowman. A loss of one third down coming up. Well, that's a great job of just rallying to the football and knowing that's how you have to be able to defense Marshawn Lynch. The 49ers defensively have not given up a hundred yard rusher yet this season. Marshawn Lynch in the first meeting week two was the closest to that. He had 98 yards rushing in that game. I know prior to the first game of this season, he had had success running the football against this 49er defense. Third down and three, low snap. Pass is caught. And it's enough for a first down. Golden Tate on third down, picks up four. You know, points are a premium in this game, and that's why, you know, Phil Dawson being able to make those field goals is big to have a two-point lead here at 9-7, to seven, but well, when you're settling for field goals and not able to come away with touchdowns, we see what's then been able to happen for, for Seattle, and here they are on another drive. Down by two, a first down at the San Francisco 41. 
Four and a half to go in the half. Lynch left side and well played. That was Dan Scuda who made the stop, a gain of two. Scuda, fifth year player, free agent pickup this year. American Idol is looking for the next superstar. Join Jennifer Lopez, Keith Urban, Harry Connick Jr., along with Ryan Seacrest as they search for the best new talent. American Idol's most exciting season yet begins Wednesday, January 15th. Here on Fox, second and eight. Wilson has got the tight end. Luke Wilson, touchdown. And the rookie Wilson has got his first. A 31 yard catch earlier in the ball game. This one from 39 yards away. Well, similar to the play we saw earlier in the game, Luke Wilson, he's on the deep crossing route. Russell Wilson, he's able to come outside the pocket. Carlos Rogers was the one who had an opportunity, even after the big game, to make a tackle and keep it at least from being a touchdown, but he fails to make the play. So it's a career long for Luke Wilson, and this is rookie year out of Rice. And he's got his first touchdown in the NFL. It's 14 to 9. I mean, the job done by the front office really for both these teams on display week after week. And a fifth round pick, Luke Wilson takes it in and gives the Seahawks a five point lead. And he gets a souvenir in San Fran. Luke Wilson gets the touchdown. At the end of a seven play 72 yard drive and the Seahawks who punted the first three times they had it have gone eight plays for 80 yards and a touchdown and then seven plays for 72 yards and a touchdown their last two possessions like you said only field goals for San Francisco so far and they're down by five Michael James on the return spinning out across the 25. Knocked down at the 28, and we'll see what the San Francisco offense can do so far. Nothing for Vernon Davis. Yeah, not yet. You know, he's he's the guy who can get down the field for the 49ers, and he's going to draw a lot of attention, whether that's with linebackers, Cam Chancellor, the safety. This time is in coverage, and then we're going to draw a little bit of help from Earl Thomas as well. But Joe, here in this first half, nobody's really caught many balls because Colin Kaepernick's just completed four in 13 attempts. and. Those are hard to complete as well against this Seattle defense. Kaepernick out to his left. Going to just slide. They'll mark him at the 30. Here's Joel Klatt with a game break. Joe, the other battle in the NFC West, and it's Arizona on top after Larry Fitzgerald finds the end zone. A seven-yard score. The Cardinals are up 14-3. Remember, just a game back of San Francisco for that sixth spot in the NFC playoff race. Good one there, Joe, Troy, and Pam. Yeah, they could go to eight and five with a win, and they are certainly right in the thick of it. Well, you just knowing how good this 49er team is, you, you, you kind of take it for granted. You just assume they're going to be one of the wild card teams, but that's what makes this game so important for them. Second down and eight. Kaepernick well protected. Penalty flag flies. Crabtree was looking for it. It's going to be a hold against Byron Maxwell. And a first down for the 49ers. Prior to the pass. Holding defense number 41. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's a good call. So they got the call, and as I said earlier, Jim Harbaugh is hopeful they'll make the call every time it's there, but he just believes that when you watch Seattle defensively, there how many times is the official going to make that call? And he doesn't believe that they've called it enough, and he's probably right. We've already seen it in this game. That there's been opportunity when the flag hasn't come out. Second defensive holding call against Seattle. Fifth penalty overall. And off is to Gore. And Gore is wrapped up by Malcolm Smith, who is in the ball game replacing the injured KJ Wright. Second and seven coming up. 
San Francisco remember with only one timeout remaining as we are making our way toward the two minute warning. No real urgency yet. Pass is caught. That's a first down and the catch made by Anquan Bolden. And that will take us to the two minute warning here at Candlestick. Last season for the 49ers in this stadium. Looking for a win today. Down five. See the comparison of the two quarterbacks so far. Two minutes left in the first half, and Colin Kaepernick got on the field, coming off two very good games. A win over the Redskins, a win over the Rams. Trying to beat the Seahawks for the first time as there's movement up front. Alex Boone, the right guard, move. Offense, number 75. Five yard penalty, still first step. Tell you what, Alex Boone is a TV star <laughs> in the making. This guy sat down in a meeting, and maybe viewers get tired of hearing about production meetings from announcers, but he is he is one of the most likable, engaging guys you'll come across anywhere. I played with one of the most unique characters in football and Kevin Gogan, and Alex Boone is his clone. On first and 15, Kaepernick finds his fullback Miller. And Miller fights to stay in bounds, and the clock continues to run after a gain of 11. Chancellor on the stop. Well, you mentioned Colin Kaepernick and how he's played the last two weeks. Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, he talked about it, said that he thought last week's game was the best game that Kaepernick has played when you look at the whole picture as far as managing the game, audibles at the line of scrimmage, the different checks protection calls and then throwing the ball with accuracy going through progressions just an outstanding day really no sense of urgency yet from San Francisco on this possession as Kaepernick floats it for a golden pass caught and a flag is down on the play as well Sherman on the coverage but Anquan Bolden coming off a big game with a 27 yard catch you know, it looked to me Joe like Anquan Bolden saw that Kaepernick was in trouble and so he then turned up the field that's when he got the penalty from Richard Sherman but you see it wasn't where Kaepernick was working defense number 25 Penalties declined was all the play was a first down initially Bolden looked like he was running a comeback he sees that Kaepernick's in trouble working his way Sherman then driving on the route they had a chance down the field. It's a good call by the official. It's another defensive hold. What a catch by Anquan Bolden. Instead of just a five-yard penalty, it's a 27-yard catch as he hauled it in. He makes those look routine. He is so good. What a steal. Great, great, great. The fifth-round pick. And a trade made with the Ravens. Kaepernick throws back. Somehow to get the ball to Vernon Davis, and he's out of bounds for the first down inside the 10 at the 6. Bruce Irvin knocked him out, and that's Vernon Davis's first catch of the day. That's yeah, a design. They're trying to sneak Vernon Davis across the formation, show everything going one way, make Vernon Davis look like he's blocking, and then come out the other side. He's able to. Pretty good gain there. He had to wait for the throw, but... That's a tough play to make for Colin Kaepernick with a defender in his face throwing away. That's a long throw. First time they've thrown in the direction of Vernon Davis. And it's first and goal from the six. Kaepernick out to his left. Going to throw it away. This is the number two scoring defense in the NFL, the Seahawks. And one of the reasons why they're fourth best inside the red zone. It's just tough to get it into the end zone against Seattle. Yeah, when you can't threaten these defensive backs down the field, then they even play tougher than they do in the middle of the field. This is an important possession here, I think, for the 49ers offensively, having to settle already for three field goals to be down here. I think a huge momentum swing in the favor of Seattle if the 49ers don't punch it in. 
on second and goal. Pass is dropped. The flag is thrown. Crabtree, the intended target. And we'll get the call from Blakeman. Pass interference. Offense, number 81. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. So they get Bolden. Yeah, I think it's a good call, Joe. You can see Bolden, and he's going to come up. It's designed. He's blocking, trying to take out the defender that would have been there to take Crabtree. Jeremy Lane was the one that Bolden made the block on. You can do that within a yard of the ball, but you can't do it down the field. The Packers, they do it as well as anybody in football. They don't ever seem to get called, but this time the 49ers did. Now second and goal, the ball back at the 16. Gore gets it. Takes it inside the 10, or it'll be third and goal to gain of eight. Block continues to wind. Only one timeout left for San Francisco. And it's the same two guys on that run by Frank Gore, Bolden, and Lane. Well, I asked Kaepernick, hey, what do you do when you see Bolden talking and getting physical like what we've seen the last two plays? He said, I just try to get the ball into his hands. Let's we'll see if he's able to here on third down. Third down and goal. Kaepernick throws for the touchdown. Vernon Davis. With six seconds left in the half, the 49ers have their first touchdown. Yeah, Vernon Davis running the crossing route. I'll tell you what, that's a that's a heck of a catch by Vernon Davis because this thing had some heat on it. I mean, Colin Kaepernick drives this ball where he had to put it away from the defender, Bobby Wagner. And for Vernon Davis to catch that football the way that he was able to from that short of a distance with that much heat on it, pretty impressive. For Vernon Davis, that's touchdown catch number 11. And it's a two point 49 er lead with six seconds to go in the half and they squeezed almost every second out of the rest of the first half. Let's find out what's coming up at halftime as we check in with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, some sunny late games, but some snowy early games. And some wild ones as well, including great finishes for New England, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh. It's all coming up on the Visa Halftime, where even Cletus is thrilled about those finishes. Yeah, it's been a fun week 14 across the NFL, and we've got a good one here in San Francisco. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, not surprised that Vernon Davis gets the ball. Only two guys. Have touchdown receptions for the 49ers, Vernon Davis and Anquan Bolden. And what's impressive about this, Joe, talk about the hands of Vernon Davis. When he was drafted and brought here back in 2006, he was not a natural pass catcher. I mean, he had to really work at catching the football with his hands and becoming pretty proficient in that area. And he's come a long way because that was not an easy catch to make. And yet he made it and he's made several. Over the years, just an outstanding football player. Yeah, what a year he's had. He had 705 yards coming in among tight ends. That was third best in the NFL. Tied for second with his 10 touchdown receptions. Now he has 11 and number one in just under 17 yards per catch for Vernon Davis. Plus, he had to deal with the umpire, Garth D. Felice, who had to duck out of the way of that rocket out of the hand of Kaepernick. Last week he showed that he was a pretty good hurdler too. Yeah. He bounces this one picked up by Luke Wilson who's got a touchdown today. And the first half is over. 15 yard return by Luke Wilson. And after a good first half we'll take a break. Two point lead for the 49ers in a big one in the NFC West and in the wild card picture. Back after this from your local Fox station.
America's Game of the Week continues on Fox. It wasn't that long ago that the NFC West did not have respect around the rest of the NFL. But I'll tell you, there is not a team out there that wants to play either one of these two teams down the stretch or in the postseason. Well, I would agree with that. I mean, certainly if you're looking at Seattle and if you have to play them, you're going to be playing in Seattle is what that looks like. And then, you know, if you're playing at home and having to play the 49ers and their style of play, it's uh, hard to beat them. But certainly at the end of that half, Joe, that was impressive what San Francisco was able to do with a few minutes on the clock, come away with a touchdown, take the lead, knowing they had the ball here to start this second half. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. You know, we said it at the beginning, but it's worth repeating. Now that they're getting healthy, they've got Crabtree back. They've had Manningham back. This 49ers offense is starting to look like that offense that got them to Super Bowl 47 last year when they came up just three points short of the Ravens. Well, and you can see how much more comfortable Colin Kaepernick is with those guys back as well. La Michael James on the return from inside the end zone. Out to the 18, maybe 19 yard line down to the field in Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, remember how the 49ers complained about being held by Seattle? Well, now the shoe is on the other foot because Pete Carroll is upset about the very same thing. He feels like the officials have got to start calling that. I got the chance to break the news to Carroll that linebacker K.J. Wright, that he is out with a foot, foot injury. As for the 49ers, I asked Jim Harbaugh, well, what is the key for the second half? He says, unbelievable toughness, unbelievable focus. Just play football. Thank you. All right, Pam, thanks. Starting at their 18-yard line. And the 49ers up by two. Pass is out of the reach of Miller, the fullback. The show Pete Carroll welcoming the players when they come back onto the field. Is there anybody, is there any head coach in football that has as much fun as Pete Carroll has? No. I mean, you saw that from him when he was coaching college ball at USC and really the whole approach and philosophy and mentality has carried over here to Seattle and this team loves playing for him. Never seen anybody chew gum like that. <laughs> Second and ten. Here's Gore bounced into Boone and then turns it into a nice game. Out to the 26 yard line, a tackle by Bryant after a gain of eight. See what's happened the last four times the 49ers have had it. Three field goals in that touchdown. With six seconds left in the first half, and now they're faced with a third down and two. Well, already Frank Gore has had a better day than he had the last time these two teams met. In that game in week two, he had just 16 yards rushing. Kaepernick threw three picks at a quarterback rating of just over 20, a career low. Vander today, third down and two. Pass caught, Crabtree. And Michael Crabtree's got a first down. As the ball comes out, they're going to call him down. Either down by contact, and you can see the official saying that the backside of Crabtree was on the ground where the ball came out. They also could have called forward progress, but there is no fumble, and it's a first down for San Francisco. Pretty good designed route. Inside guy, Anquan Bolden, he's going outside, and then Crabtree coming underneath that, expecting bump coverage and get the natural pick, but you know, Crabtree on the ground. I tell you, Joe Staley, who we talked about, didn't expect to play. He made a nice block on that play also. Pete Carroll is challenging the call. The official came in and said the backside of Michael Crabtree was on the ground when the ball came out. And that may be a good challenge. Yeah, it might be. You know, from the one angle, it looked like he was down. And from that shot there, I'm not so sure, Joe. Again, for Seattle to get the ball, you have to definitively see that the Seahawks then came out with the football which is definitely the case but the question is was the backside of Michael Crabtree on the ground Rolling before it came out is that the runner's progress was stopped prior to the ball coming loose that particular play is not challengeable by review 
Interesting. However, Seattle will not be charged with a timeout nor a penalty. It'll be first down, San Francisco. Yeah, that's what I talked about at the time of the call. The official, the official who made, blew the whistle and ended the play was coming in and kind of smacking his backside, saying that, watch this, saying that the backside of Crabtree was down before the ball came out. Then they come back and they change it and they say the forward progress was stopped which means that there is no fumble, and it's not reviewable. Here's Kaepernick using his legs out shy of the 45, but a gain of six, where Bobby Wagner made the stop. Bobby Wagner, he drops into coverage, and he has his eyes on Colin Kaepernick throughout that play in the event that Kaepernick decides to tuck it and run, which he did, but he picks up a... A nice game. The one thing about Seattle is even at times when they get out of position, they're so fast in pursuit that they're able to take what could be a pretty good gain into a minimal game. Now second down at four. Handoff is to Frank Gore, and he just runs into a pile. Picks up two. Third down and short coming up. Niners again playing without Mike Upati for the third straight game their Pro Bowl left guard Adam Snyder who spent a year in Arizona and came back to the 49ers after making 14 starts last year for the Cardinals is in left guard third and two Kaepernick keeps it and down he goes and the play is made by Malcolm Smith. Smith, a backup linebacker, made the play, a loss of six, and it's fourth down for San Francisco. Well, Malcolm Smith, he plays this well. He comes up the field. He never goes for the dive back. He stays on Colin Kaepernick, and Kaepernick unable to get outside of him. And Pete Carroll likes the way they executed that. Very disciplined in how they play things defensively. And they illustrated that on the last play. It goes down as a run, no sack, but for Malcolm Smith playing in place of the injured K.J. Wright, a big play on third down. Fair catch by Golden Tate. And the punt by Lee, good for 41 yards. First possession, second half for the Seahawks. Russell Wilson down two. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. $1.2 billion Levi's Stadium. About an hour south of here in Santa Clara. With the home of Super Bowl 50 in February of 2016. Final season at Candlestick. The 49ers have been playing since 1971. First possession, second half. Passes out of the reach of Zach Miller. Second and ten coming up. You look at the offensive leaders for the Seahawks after a half. The last couple of games for Seattle, you see what Russell Wilson's been able to do. And then, of course, Marshawn Lynch. You know, they, the last two teams have been able to keep Marshawn Lynch in check. But you see right there, he's at the half century mark after the first half. So he's been able to run the ball fairly effectively here against this 49er defense. And he has climbed over the 1,000-yard rushing mark in this game. He adds to it, spins to the 25. McDonald on the tackle, a gain of seven. Third and three coming up. Of course, when you talk about the 49er defense, you need to talk about the guy who puts it all together, and that's Vic Fangio. And he's in his third season here in San Francisco and really has done a masterful job. And you wonder if a guy like him is going to get an opportunity at some point to be a head coach. I think he'd be outstanding. But he has been really good at coordinating this defense for the 49ers. On third down. Pass is caught and what a catch by Jermaine Curse. He's got a first down and Troy he had to lay out to pick up the first down. What a beautiful catch by number 15. Well, he lays out, but Marshawn Lynch, he's got to be able to make a block and help protect the inside, which he does. And 
I know Russell Wilson in visiting with him about Jermaine Curse. He said the guy put in a lot of time in the offseason and he, he knew that he was going to make some real contributions and they've had to depend on him because of the injuries we talked about earlier and he makes a nice play. Same body type as Sidney Rice. Bigger wide receiver is Wilson just looking for somewhere to go and he finds Baldwin left alone. And Doug Baldwin is out of bounds. A late hit on that play. Eric Reed made the stop. But a gain of 14 yards and a first down. Well, Seattle's trying to get a big play down the field and they run a double move here on Eric Wright, but he was not fooled at all. He plays on top. But that area that then got vacated is where they threw it to Baldwin. And we're able to pick up the first down. You see Lockett come back and get that hit on Whitner. Second catch for Baldwin, a first down, and here's Turbin. Turbin picks up four, and we go to Kurt with a game break. All right, Denver already sporting the best record in the AFC. Continues their comeback. They actually take the lead and expand it. No Sean Moreno, one yard touchdown run. After being down 21 10, they lead 34 21 in the third quarter. Coach Wayne Pam. First game back for John Fox. They're trying to stay out in front of New England in the chase for home field advantage in the AFC. Marshawn Lynch had to get a new helmet. <laughs> they just took it off one of his teammates. Took it off Turban. <laughs> And here's Lynch on second down and six. Lynch got three. Now, what are the odds that they have the same hat size? He actually took it off Derek Coleman. So Coleman's left without a helmet. And Lynch, I mean, that's just being prepared. He went right to Derek Coleman, the free agent out of UCLA, and grabbed a helmet. See his day with a touchdown early. And now he gets a visor. Third down and three. Out of the shotgun, Wilson throws, and the pass broken up. Brock. Intended for Golden Tate, and a nice play by Tremaine Brock. There was Tremaine Brock. He sat on it, he drives on it. You see, he immediately clues Russell Wilson and comes back on the ball, and he's been a ball hawk since he's gotten some opportunity to play. Terrell Brown missing his third game. Jermaine Brock has played well for this 49er defense. Brown out with a right rib injury, so Brock making his third straight start. Another example of the 49ers' depth. Fair catch, and a flag is down. Well, Michael James with a fair catch after a 32 yard punt. And a flag thrown, so we'll hear again from Cleet Blakeman. 49ers about to get it back after that play by Brock as they lead by two. Well, each team has gotten the ball once in the second half, and Neither offense was able to come away with any points. The face mask. Kicking team number 20. 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down in San Francisco. It's against Jeremy Lane. That's the call. And a personal foul on Lane. <laughs> 735 left. The third quarter we showed you that. Penalty against Jeremy Lane looked like a bad call. It was not on the face mask, but up high on the shoulder pads. It moves the ball out to the 32. And off is to Kendall Hunter. And Kendall Hunter carries it for two when we go back to that call against Jeremy Lane, number 20, as he gets the San Francisco player up high. It's Craig Dahl right there. He got the hand across the face mask, but grabbed him by the jersey. And not a good call. Went down as a personal foul, so 15 yards, now second and eight. Kaepernick has Bolden. And Bolden, who made that big 
splash in his 49er debut against Green Bay 13 catches over 200 yards had been held in check until last week nine catches 98 yards and Troy you have to believe the presence of Michael Crabtree opens things up it should for Vernon Davis it certainly should for Anquan Bolden. Well, even as we see Michael Crabtree, Joe, I don't, I don't think there's any way he could be 100%. But you still got to guard him, and so you take coverage at least a little bit away from Davis, as you said, and Anquan Bolden, and give Kaepernick another weapon. Kaepernick flushed. He's got Crabtree, and the catch is made. Good catch by Crabtree. A gain of four, and we'll take another look. Yeah, tight coverage by Richard Sherman. Contact at the top, and he comes out of the break, and that's the that's an excellent job of catching the football. That ball is away from him. He's got outstanding hands as Sherman gets away with a grab, but that's the thing that I was questioning is how good is Crabtree getting out of breaks with an Achilles injury? That's a significant injury just six months ago. I'm shocked that he was even able to come back and play this season. That's a great job of coming out of the break and making a catch. I don't know that his right foot got down inbounds as Gore carries it down inside the 40. It was only a four yard completion to Crabtree anyway. So maybe not worth the challenge. And then on the next play, Gore carries it for 15 yards as he got small down through that hole. Yeah, not a whole lot of space in there, but they're able to. Give him just enough. It doesn't take much. Frank Gore is uh, very elusive. Very different styles. These two backs, they're both great running backs. Have had a lot of success. Marshawn Lynch, more physical. Frank Gore, he can also run with power, but much more elusive probably than Marshawn Lynch. It's the longest run by either side today, 15 yards. On first down. Kaepernick has pulled it. And Bolden is down inside the 20. Bobby Wagner on the stop. Well, Bobby Wagner does a good job, but it's when Kaepernick starts to move. You see, he's watching Kaepernick, and when Kaepernick begins to move, he loses then Anquan Bolden. Bolden keeps the play alive. That's what you're supposed to do as a wide receiver. Just uncover yourself from the defender and let the quarterback find you. Bolden came in with 35% of his team's receptions. That's the highest percentage in the NFL. On first down, pass for Crabtree is picked off. Byron Maxwell. And Maxwell on the return is going to be brought down by Bruce Miller inside the five. But the first turnover of the day is Kaepernick's eighth interception of the season. And for Maxwell, that's his first. Now, Maxwell, he turns and makes a play on the ball. It's uh, just an excellent job on his part. The turnover by the 49ers. Seahawks have it down by two. Colin Kaepernick has thrown 11 career interceptions, five to the Seahawks. And Seattle this year led the NFL in takeaways coming into today with 27. That was number 28. From the three yard line, the handoff is to Lynch, bouncing it to the edge, and Marshawn Lynch is out of bounds near the seven. Whitner forced him out. And now flag. So we'll get the call, a late flag. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting on the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. We welcome in a new audience as we get a taunting call against Dante Whitner getting into the face of Marshawn Lynch. That's what drew the flag and moments ago Byron Maxwell with his first career interception on the return he was dragged down at the three Colin Kaepernick came back to the sideline saying it's on him. That's the fourth interception he's thrown this season to the Seahawks three up in Seattle week two. 
And now down by two, Russell Wilson fires Golden Tate with the catch. And Tate is good for eight, eight and a half. Carlos Rogers on the tackle. If you're just joining us, why don't you, Troy? Tell the new audience at least what we've seen so far. Well, let me just tell you, Joe, that, that penalty on Dante Whitner, that was a huge penalty against the 49ers. The Seahawks, after intercepting the ball, keeping the 49ers from at least getting a field goal on that drive, they're backed up. Dante Whitner's in his eighth year, a veteran player, and you got to know they're going to make those calls for taunting. It's one of the emphasis in the NFL. Just a huge mistake on his part. Now second down and two, play clock is at one. Wilson flushed out. Pass is caught. Baldwin's got a first down. Knocked down by Carlos Rogers, but a completion for eight yards. So in this game, you've got the Seahawks with the league's best record at 11 and one. You've got the 49ers alive in the wild card chase at eight and four. And you see what Russell Wilson can, can do with his legs and then his arm with a completion to Doug Baldwin for the first down. Yeah, it's a little bit like what we've seen with the 49ers and Kaepernick keeping the play alive. Russell Wilson does. Doug Baldwin finds a hole. And Wilson gets the ball to him. Here's Lynch left side. Penalty flag flies. Reed on the tackle, but a flag is down. And it appears to be against Seattle. The officials are talking and Russell Wilson listening in. Here's the call from Cleve Blakeman. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Offense, number 26. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. They get the fullback, Michael Robinson. Yeah, that's Michael Robinson and as soon as Scuda tries to come off of the block to go after Lynch. He gets him on the face mask, and that was a big gain because there was outstanding blocking on the perimeter by Jermaine Curse. And so that marches the football back 15 yards. It's now inside the 25. A personal foul on each side during this possession, and it's first down at 25 for the Seahawks. Wilson, that ball batted up into the air, may have hit a helmet or a shoulder pad. It's incomplete. And with a minute 33 left in the third quarter, it'll be second and 25. Never be without football. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download it now. San Francisco came into this game having been outscored by the Seahawks 71 to 16 over their last two meetings. And of course, both those were at Seattle. Pete Carroll yet to win here at Candlestick as the head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson takes a timeout. Before a second and 25, we'll take a break too with a minute 33 left in the third. Second down and 25 for the Seahawks down by two in this meeting of two teams built similarly power running balanced use the play action dominant defenses a lot of wins second down and 25 Wilson steps up in a run and get down before he gets a hit from Carlos Rogers a gain of just three third and long coming up. We'll see what happens here on third down, Joe. But for a drive that began on the three yard line for Seattle, I mean, at least they're able to get the ball off of their own goal line and you know reestablish some field position if they're unable to pick up this third down. They've been good on third down, but certainly third and 22, you don't have any place for that. Three wide receivers, pass is caught by Tate. And Golden Tate gets crunched. Navarro Bowman over to make the hit, a gain of eight. It's fourth down. And 
That is defensive back, I believe, Eric Wright, who is down and unable to get up after that catch and run. Got a knee to the head. That's why he's down 40 seconds left, fourth down, when we come back. Zach Miller came in at the end of this play. You'll see the knee of Miller, the right knee, hit into the helmet of Eric Wright. And Wright is thankfully able to sit up as they check him with 40 seconds left in the third quarter. So we look at some of the early game headliners here in week 14, and it's been a wild week around the NFL. Tom Brady in that come from behind win yet again, three straight weeks for Brady and the Patriots. Andy Dalton, Cincinnati Bengals are in a good spot in the AFC, and Jamal Charles, the Chiefs just took apart the Redskins in their game in Kansas City and a nice ovation for Eric Wright who's able to get up and at least walk off. Yeah it's good to see him get up and get off the field on his own power and you know that's uh, that's scary anytime you see somebody take a knee to the helmet. No team covers punts in the NFL this year like the Seahawks end over end punt and another fair catch by LaMichael James, they're gonna throw a flag. O'Brien Schofield downfield made contact. And let's take another look. Well, he, yeah, he gave the fair, fair catch signal and you gotta allow him then to be able to make the catch. So contact was made, I don't think he was blocked into the him. The kicking team, at least 15 yards from the spot. First down, San Francisco. It's a 15-yard penalty on Schofield for making contact with the left shoulder of LaMichael James. 49ers in good field position, leading by two. so far between the Seahawks and 49ers eight of the last nine games between these two have been won by the home team Kaepernick with play action out of the reach of Frank Gore the lone exception by the way in this rivalry is when the 49ers on Christmas Eve 2011 won in Seattle that's the last time the Seahawks have lost at home. They've won 14 straight. As Jim Harbaugh studies that play sheet before a second and ten. Well, they definitely enjoy a home field advantage there with that crowd. It's something to see. Unlike anywhere else in the NFL now, Gore slips. Wasn't much there anyway and lost a yard. And that'll do it for the third quarter here in San Francisco. Third and 11 for the 49ers when we come back. Fourth quarter, that's where we're headed. Back after this from your local Fox station. This is certainly a big one for the 49ers with regard to the NFC playoff picture. Seattle on top of the division, a chance to wrap up the division with a win here today, a place where they haven't won since 2008. 49ers trying to stay out in front. They battle for a wild card spot. It's third down and 11. Kaepernick is going to be ripped to the ground by Chris Clemens. Clemens gets the sack. That gives him four and a half for the year and a loss of 10. Uh, he gets Joe Staley turned around a little bit. You're going to see Chris Clemens starts like he's going to use a speed move and tries to come off of that. And there was. You know, there was a little bit of time there, but you got to get guys down the field third and long. And just nobody came clean right away. And so Chris Clemens then able to make the sack. That is the first sack of the day for this Seattle defense. And they're 35th of the year. Lee punts it. 
Golden Tate from inside the 20 is brought down immediately. And it's the rookie Eric Reed. And then a flag is thrown again after the play. To Sim Osgood, who has a block punt in this game, down on a knee and now just trying to get up. But another flag thrown after the play. And Bowman was right into it with Heath Farwell. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 53, late hit, 15 yards and in the run. First down, Seattle. So that'll take the ball all the way out to the 30-yard line. Uh, you see Bowman, you know, he went to the ground and, you know, looked like there could have been a penalty there called then on Seattle. He gets up and retaliates. That's what the official sees. And another 15-yard penalty. Those are things that are hard to overcome. You know, in a game like this, field position, we talked about that. And, you know, how big right now holding on to a two-point lead is the interception that, that Colin Kaepernick threw when they were in a position to at least come away with three points. That is the only turnover of the game. Here's Lynch. He's been bottled up for the most part. Does have a touchdown run. Picks up three. I mean, field position in games like this are, are really big because it's so hard, as we've seen offensively, to be able to sustain drives against good defensive teams. And... When you tack on 15 yards, as we've seen happen to the 49ers now a couple of times, it sure changes then what you're thinking offensively and willing to try. Glenn Dorsey checks out before second and seven. Wilson finds the tight end, Luke Wilson. He's got a touchdown in this game. He gains two, third down coming for Seattle. Pretty apparent though these <laughs> pretty apparent these teams don't like each other. Yeah, you knew that coming in and it gets validated every time. Seahawks won in week two big at home over the 49ers. San Francisco needs this one. Third and five. Wilson dumps it off for Tate. No catch. Pass is incomplete. Tate was wide open. But he could not make the grab. It's fourth down. Well, Russell Wilson, he threats as though he's going to run. You see the ball clearly bounces off the, the turf. Right there, but you know, had they been able to get the ball into his hands, they pick up the first down. But Russell Wilson, because he's threatening to run. Then you've got to make a decision. They come up, and that opens up Golden Tate, but wasn't able to deliver a better throw. Good job by this fifth-ranked 49er defense. They get a three and out. And there's movement. And they blow this play dead. San Francisco came across. That drew movement on the other side. On the Seattle side, we'll get the call from Blake. False start. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. They get Heath Farwell, who had movement happen across from him. And that's the ninth Seattle penalty of this game. They came in the second most penalized team in the NFL, second to Tampa Bay. And the ninth of the day. He's going to move the ball back to the 29. And there's that mark again. 15 total punt return yards allowed this season by Seattle. And the first straightaway punts of the day. Penalty flag again. And James, nowhere to go, is going to fight out near the 29. Mary goes on the tackle, but a flag early. You can't find two more active head coaches than these two guys. You got Carroll and the rah rah stuff on one side, and Harbaugh's in the ear of the official the entire game on yeah, his he's side. He's watching every single thing that's happening. I've seen him in preseason. He, he doesn't take a playoff. Turn the kick, holding the return team number 26. 
10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, San Francisco. That's against Tremaine Brock. And here's the call. It's Lane. He's been busy here today. That drew the flag. And more from Jim Harbaugh with his team up to. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Beats by Dre. Visit BeatsByDre.com to see how Colin Kaepernick silences the haters. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. And by Universal Pictures 47 Ronin starring Keanu Reeves in theaters Christmas Day. Starting at their 14-yard line. Up by two. Play action from Kaepernick. Gonna run. Out of bounds at the 20. We talked about what Seattle likes to do. More contact there on Crabtree with Maxwell, and he's trying to shake it free and get open. And Kaepernick then was forced to tuck the ball and run, but these officials, they have let them go. The one guy who likes it that way is Anquan Bolden. He, I think he'd prefer not to ever see a flag, but Maxwell has gotten physical throughout this game. On second down and two, handoff to Hunter. He's got a first down. Chancellor on the stop, a carry of six yards. The San Francisco ground game. Seventh ranked rushing offense coming in and 42 percent of their total yards have come on the ground coming into this game that's the highest percentage in the NFL and they've done a good job in this game running the ball Joe Get the kill. Get the kill. 94 yards on the day against Seattle on first down passes the hands of Anton Bolden. Fox Sports Live tonight at 11 Eastern. Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole will have all the highlights and reaction from week 14 in the NFL. Also, who will play in the BCS National Championship game? And who is on the outside looking in? Kobe returns for the Lakers. A lot to talk about tonight on Fox Sports 1. Second and ten. That's Miller. Nice play made by Bruce Irvin. Who is learning that linebacker spot. He made a good play, a gain of only three, third down coming up. Well, they had ten guys on the line of scrimmage. Seattle did on that last play, and they... You know, the 49ers just unable to take advantage of it. They have to come out to Bruce Miller. And, you know, safety in the middle of the field, as you see here. But there's 10 guys. They're all up there at the line of scrimmage and just daring San Francisco to take a shot down the field. And that's what they do every week. And so few teams are really able to exploit that. On third down and seven. Penalty flag flies. Kaepernick. Trying to make something happen. Finds Bolden, but again, a flag is down. Another call from Cleet. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Offense, number 75. Ten yard penalty, replay, third down. That is Alex Boone, who described the Seattle defense as ferocious. He's right there in the middle of the picture and got his hands up too high as he got him into the face of Michael Bennett. And Bolden at the end of this play, you see the official trying to talk to him. There was some conversation going on with Bolden and one of the Seattle defenders at the end of the play, the official trying to talk to him and he's pushing him aside. He got to be careful as well. So now third down at 17. At their own 20 instead of a first and 10 up at the 45 because of the call against Boone. Four men on the rush and down goes Kaepernick. 
Clinton McDonald gets the sack. And a big play on third down. For the fifth year player out of Memphis traded from Cincinnati. Yeah, right in the middle, Adam Snyder. It looked like Snyder may be thinking he might get a little bit of help from his center, Jonathan Goodwin, but he he didn't. Goodwin working away. So Snyder was one on one, and he's just unable to slow that down. They are so deep up front along their defensive line. They rotate guys in, and they just keep coming at you. Good punt. Golden Tate from the 35. Golden Tate with a big return. Down inside the 30. Andy Lee slowed him down. Kasim Osgood in on the stop. But after a 54-yard punt, it's a 37-yard return by Golden Tate. Good field position for Seattle. Down by two. How about the weather today in Baltimore and in Philadelphia? We look ahead to Super Bowl 48 on the 2nd of February, and there's the Farmer's Almanac forecast. An intense storm, heavy rain, snow, and strong winds. <laughs> Anything missing? Locusts. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. Can't wait. At MedLife, after that 38-yard officially, Return by Golden Tate. Seattle already inside field goal range for Hauschka. Out of the shotgun. Wilson fires and it's broken up. Whitner in coverage. Pass intended for Jermaine Curse. Second and ten. Well, with the field position now that Seattle has offensively, I mean, this becomes a huge possession for this 49ers defense. I mean, right now from here, they're already in field goal range. So for the 49ers to only give up maybe a field goal opportunity will be a successful possession for them. Little bobble on the snap as Lynch runs into Dorsey. He picks up four. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Joe, we've got a couple of injury updates that impact both Seattle and San Francisco. First for the Seahawks, Russell Wilson center Max Unger has a chest injury and won't return. The 49ers nickel cornerback Eric Wright, he's being looked at for a head injury. No word yet on if he, if he will come back. Back to you. All right, well, Max Unger's already missed three games. And they've got the mule Jean-Pierre at center third and six Wilson completes and a first down for Jermaine curse brought down at the 15 yard line and a third down conversion from Russell Wilson that's a nice job by Russell Wilson and a good route by Jermaine curse he works down the field and then just immediately turns around Russell Wilson Knows what he's going to do, puts it on him with good protection in the pocket. That was a key third down conversion. Second catch for Curse. Both have been for first downs. Hand off to Lynch. And Lynch picks up two. When we talked to Russell Wilson, he said, you know, I look around at all the other quarterbacks in the league and I say why not me and he mentioned three guys by name he talked about the preparation of Peyton Manning the clutch play of Tom Brady and the precision of Drew Brees and then he said well why not us <laughs> best record in the NFL down by two second and eight hand off to Lynch Eric Reed, the rookie, the really good rookie safety in on the stop. No gain. And good to see Eric Wright back in the game defensively for San Francisco. Here's another third down. And this is what it comes down to. This is the down that you have to win, whether you're defense or offense. And both these teams have... Seattle's been pretty good on this down overall here today. Five for 11. Yeah. 
Wilson. Out to his left. Incomplete. Nowhere to go. Curse the intended target, but that was well covered downfield by the 49ers. That's really a great job by San Francisco. The good thing is, is they force Russell Wilson out of the pocket to his left. It becomes a little bit more difficult then to make some of the throws that you can make when you're rolling out to the right side as a right-handed quarterback, and Russell Wilson just has to wisely throw it away. Steven Hauschka is having a Pro Bowl year. He is 26 of 27 for the season. This from 31 yards out. Good snap, good hold. The kick is just inside the left upright. And it's the first points of the second half. And it puts Seattle on top. The 11 and 1 Seahawks. Fourth quarter, up by one. Today's game is sponsored by Walking with Dinosaurs. This Christmas, only in theaters. OT is coming up after this one. Our aerial coverage provided by Nationwide Insurance. 49ers now down by a point with 6.20 left in the ballgame. San Francisco trying to up their record to 9-4. Philadelphia won at home over Detroit. They're 8-5. San Francisco loses. They go to 8-5. Dallas is at 7-5. But they play tomorrow night at Chicago. That other wild card spot seems to go this season in the NFC to whoever doesn't win the South. New Orleans and Carolina battling in that division. They play tonight. May have missed a face mask on Alden Smith. Prior to the field goal. 49ers have it down one. Game of the week continues with 6.20 to go. Starting at the 20 yard line, Kaepernick is going to run, turn it into a positive play. Colin Kaepernick with a quarterback rating of 65.9. So far in this game, the 49ers had that impressive touchdown drive at the end of the first half, but the last four times they've had it. Three punts and a pick. You know, Kaepernick, he started off this game, uh, wasn't throwing the ball particularly well against the secondary as you wouldn't expect, but he has been much better, although they haven't been able to come away with any points. The interception obviously keeping them from coming down with at least three points has been a difference in this ball game, but it's a huge drive right here. You just don't, you don't know how many more opportunities you're going to get. On second and six, pass is caught by Crabtree. He spins and is about a half yard, maybe a full yard shy of a first down. Maxwell, who has the interception, his first of the season, was there to make the tackle. And it'll be third down and one coming up on five minutes left in the game. San Francisco, all three of their timeouts. Miller and Gore in the backfield. Timeout. They have to use one here. So why don't we take a look at the playoff picture, Troy, in the NFC, and you see Seattle sitting on top. They have the best record in the NFL. Then it's that battle in the south. They play tonight. New Orleans and a team in the second column, Carolina. Philadelphia, Detroit. Philadelphia's win for the moment kicks Dallas into the in the hunt category but if Dallas wins tomorrow night in Chicago they're back on the far left side of this graphic well it gets real interesting Joe as far as the wild card picture but you know how about New Orleans last week traveling to Seattle in a game that you know you looked at and you said okay who's going to have the advantage for home field advantage Seattle wins that game convincingly and now New Orleans is you know, they're hanging on trying to win their division. They could find themselves going uh, from potentially having home field advantage to playing in a wild card. That's because of an eight.
game winning streak by the Panthers. Now third and one. It's Miller, and Miller's got it. He fought his way across the 30. Cam Chancellor was there to meet him, but he gained him two. And a big first down with under five to go. Yeah, I'll say those, those one yard conversions, you know, a lot of people think that they're easy to convert. Well, they're not, and they're especially not against this Seattle defense. Cam Chandler is the safety. He's up there tight. But Bruce Miller able to pick it up. was in the hole he just overruns it enough and allows Frank Gore to come underneath the block and you know, right at the end of this play he wasn't going to get any further but just about the time he's about to be tackled is when he goes to the ground Adam Snyder celebrated Staley was celebrating the offensive line loved it a season high 51 yard carry by Frank Gore and a first down at the 18 yard line here's Hunter Kendall Hunter is met by Cam Chancellor in a gain of two. I'm not sure what the status is of Frank Gore, but he's got the jacket on. And so you ask yourself, OK, well, it looks like for the remainder of this ball game, Kendall Hunter may be your featured back. Timeout taken by Seattle. And we will welcome you inside our broadcast booth. Joe and Troy with you in this game I think has been as advertisers been a lot of action during play there's been a lot of action after the whistle and uh, a good defensive struggle fun game it's been a great game you know two well coached teams you don't expect to see a run like that from Frank Gore against this defense this defense just does not give up big plays but San Francisco needed something and they were able to get it well you, we've already talked about the importance of this game for the 49ers and as you said earlier and it's good to see Frank Gore take the jacket off and come back in on the heels of this 51 yard run San Francisco just flat out needs this ball game and you could see that left leg buckle a bit but he's OK to continue 49ers have not lost at home here to the Seahawks since 2008. Gore. He's going to be brought down at the 15 yard line third down coming up again of two yeah, as much as you'd like to be able to run this clock down and pick up more yardage there on that second down run third and seven I you know I think Jim Harbaugh has got to put the ball in Colin, Colin Kaepernick's hands here and see if they can't pick up a first down here and keep this drive going instead it's third and seven and Seattle is using their final timeout. Fox tomorrow the future and past collide on an epic night of drama first it's the critically acclaimed new hit series almost human then on an all new sleepy hollow a father risks everything for answers it all starts tomorrow at 8 Eastern 7 Central on Fox Bill Dawson getting ready he is three for three on the day he's missed only three all season. Right now the ball is at the 15 you're looking at a 33 yard field goal try from this spot. Yeah you got to be smart if you're Colin Kaepernick but a first down here you're able to take a lot of time off this clock. <laughs> On third down and seven out to his left. Looking for blocking and he is tipped up with a first down. And that's exactly what happened. A big first down run for Colin Kaepernick. That was a run the entire way. Jim Harbaugh did not want to risk an incompletion in stopping the clock. He wanted to run this thing down, but call a play that maybe gives you a chance then to pick up the first down. He's got pulling linemen, Adam Snyder, Joe Staley out in front, breaks a tackle, picks up a first down. That's big. Seattle out of timeouts. Clock running. 
You expect the run, you get it. Frank Gore covers up the football. And he's got back at the nine, a loss of one. Cam Chancellor on the stop. And that will take us to the two minute warning. And it will be second down, and Gore is still limping. The big carry to set up this opportunity. Now inside the red zone. And we will go to the two minute warning in San Francisco, a game they desperately need against their divisional rival, the Seattle Seahawks. Two minutes left. In the bag. 49ers win this game Troy they will have put themselves in this position on the big run by Frank Gore who has his first 100 yard game since week six against Arizona 49ers have been waiting for it he had been held in check over the last three games but a big run here late it's second and goal two minutes left Seattle no timeouts It's Gore. Plows ahead to the six. Where it will be third down and goal. Seahawks will get the ball back. The question is, will it be after a field goal? Will it be after a touchdown? How much time will be left on the clock with no timeouts in their pocket? Yeah, and that's the big thing, Joe. So see what happens here on third down and how much time's left when Russell Wilson gets it but there should be enough time at least for them to if they're able to hold San Francisco here to a field goal there should be at least enough time for them to be able to run off some plays and get back in position Jim Harbaugh spends the second time out of the second half here with a minute 15 remaining Fox's football coverage does not end when the games are over afterwards, stick around for the OT. The guys will bring you extended highlights, analysis, interviews, and a look ahead to next week's action. America's number one post-game show, the OT, presented by Lowe's, coming up next here on Fox. How about this drive? It started at the San Francisco 20 with 6.20 left in the game. They converted a big third and one on a handoff to Bruce Miller. They got the big run from Frank Gore. And now with the 10th play of this drive coming they are in a perfect position against the Seahawks yeah, and I think right now you you ask is Pete Carroll you know do you let them score here and keep some time on the clock knowing then you've got to come back with a touchdown or do you try to make a defensive stop here. Hand off to Gore. He takes it inside the five down to the four. Clock will continue to run. It's fourth down. There's the answer to that question. The field goal unit will come on, and that's a group that includes a rookie, Kevin McDermott. The guy who will snap it. The holder is Andy Lee, who is the punter, and the kicker is Phil Dawson, who will try to have a four for four day. It's basically an extra point distance wise. 22 yard try coming up. By the man at the bottom of that list, Phil Dawson. Well, you still got to execute it, even though you're that close. But you look at it at 31 seconds, and, and you know how much time there should be. There will be enough time for one play, maybe a couple of plays for Seattle when they get the ball. A lot of it depends on what the return's going to be like. Take a look back at how we arrived to this point. Marshawn Lynch got the first touchdown of the day. Then it was the rookie tight end Luke Wilson. Colin Kaepernick right before the half found Vernon Davis with six seconds left for the first touchdown for the 49ers. A pick by Maxwell. A field goal by Hauschka, the only points of this second half. But the run by Frank Gore, the 51 yarder, set it up. And a 22 yard try by Dawson with 31 seconds left. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And the 49ers lead by two. What a drive. 
that started with over six minutes on the clock. And now with 26 seconds left, the 49ers have the two-point lead. We welcome in a new audience. Big game for San Francisco with Philadelphia winning earlier at home in the snow over Detroit. The 49ers are 26 seconds away in this tight game with Seattle from their ninth win of the season. Colin Kaepernick trying to beat the Seattle Seahawks for the first time in his career. And here's the big run by Gore, the 51 yarder. Yeah, there was plenty of time on the clock, as you said. That drive was an outstanding job by the 49ers, but the big run there by Frank Gore set it all up, and then they're able to run the clock down here to 26 seconds left in this ball game. And for Seattle, when they get the ball back, clearly they're going to have to have a couple big plays down the field with no timeouts, get out of bounds. It's a lot to ask, but we've seen some wild finishes, Joe. That 51-yard run, a season long for the 49ers, a season long against Seattle. As you said, they just don't give up big plays. And in a game where there's been six lead changes, the 49ers are on top with 26 seconds left. Golden Tate on the return. Can't get to the 20. It's Bubba Ventrone making the play. One of the best special teams players in the NFC. It was a big time play by Ventrone. Golden Tate trying to make something happen. He decides to bring it out. The pride of Villanova. Downfield to make the hit and the stop on Golden Tate. Well, Russell Wilson here, he has to drive something down the field. No timeouts. Wilson going to air it out. Curse downfield. Pass is picked off. And this day is over. Intercepted by Eric Wright. And with nine seconds left, the 49ers take over. Big win for Jim Harbaugh. Pete Carroll suffers the Seahawks' second loss of the season. That's a great win, as you said, Joe, for San Francisco. And people questioning who San Francisco had beaten, and they needed a play here at home against a good football team and show that they could beat what right now is the best team in the NFC. And this is a huge win for the 49ers for all the reasons we've stated. Kaepernick beat Seattle for the first time. He engineered that 11 play 76 yard drive. that took five minutes and 54 seconds off the clock and the Sports Illustrated cover boy Jim Harbaugh to midfield to meet Pete Carroll on the heels of this win. 49ers on top. They beat their divisional rival, the Seahawks. Take a break and come back to Candlestick after this. We'll give you the Pepsi play of the game, and it was the 51-yard carry by Frank Gore. The all-time leading rusher in 49er history. He set it up. The 22-yarder by Phil Dawson won it. And now the home team has won nine of the last ten in this great series between the 49ers and the Seahawks. A smile for Jim Harbaugh. Big win. We'll take a break. The OT presented by Lowe's is coming up. 49ers on top of the Seahawks here today.